When you're making straight cuts in wood, you're going to be using one of three saws, the circular saw, the miter saw, or the table saw. What you use depends on the strengths and weaknesses of each, the job at hand, and which saw you have. Let's start with cross-cutting. You can avoid a lot of confusion if you draw a line laying out the cut and mark the waist side of the board with an X. Circular saws have two marks on the plate that show you where the saw will cut. One mark shows the left side of the cut, the other shows the right side. The space between is called the kerf. Use the marks to position the saw so that the kerf, which becomes sawdust, is on the waist side of the board. With practice, you can use the notch to cut along the line and get a clean, straight cut. However, there's no point trusting your skill if the cut has to be precise. Guide the cut along a square made for the job. Position the saw. Then put the square's fence against the edge of the board and slide the square against the base plate of the saw. Back the saw away from the wood before you start the cut. And then just guide the base plate along the square. A miter saw gives you perhaps the cleanest and truest of all cross cuts. However, before you rely on it completely, make sure the cut it makes is truly square. Slowly cut through a board, you'll get a much cleaner cut. And when the blade stops, flip one of the pieces over. If there's a gap between the pieces when you hold them against the fence, the cut isn't square. A simple adjustment described in the owner's manual will bring the saw into alignment. Despite its accuracy, the miter saw has one major drawback, width of cut. A 10-inch saw can cut boards up to 6 inches wide. A 12-inch saw can cut boards up to 8 inches wide. For cross-cutting wider boards, you want a table saw. When you cross-cut on the table saw, you guide the cut with a miter gauge. You can buy an aftermarket gauge that is accurate to the thousands of an inch and to within one-tenth of a degree. But you can also use the gauge that comes with the saw with pretty much the same results. You'll need to add two things to your miter gauge for best results. First, screw a wooden fence to the head of the gauge. This gives you a long edge that is more accurate when setting angles and provides more support when cross-cutting. Secondly, clamp a stop block to the fence so that once the block is in position, it keeps the board from moving sideways during the cut. Even minor movement will result in a cut that's not square. The block not only stops movement, but also assures that every cut you make against it will be exactly the same length. For best results, cut one end of each board, set the stop, and cut to the length at the other end. Once you're set up, set the miter gauge to zero, the setting for a square cut. Make a cut, turn off the saw, and test for the square the same way you did on the miter saw. Flip one of the boards over, put them both against the fence, and look for a gap where they meet. Make any necessary adjustments, and reset the pointer so it points directly at zero. If the stops built into the miter gauge keep you from getting to the right setting, loosen them as described in your owner's manual. Equally important is the stop that automatically positions the miter gauge at 90 degrees. On this saw, it's a screw that strikes a pin. Once you've got the miter gauge cutting a true 90 degree angle, adjust the screw so that it's against the pin. Next time you change the angle of the cut, you'll be able to set it back to 90 degrees just by turning the head of the miter gauge until it stops. When it comes to miters, both the miter saw and table saw are far more accurate than anything you could produce by trying to guide a circular saw along a pencil line. On a miter saw, cutting an angle is a matter of setting the table to the desired angle, tightening the handle and making the cut. There will be several angles, including 45 degrees, at which the saw clicks into place, simplifying adjustments. As long as you set the saw to make an accurate 90 degree cut, the angle settings and stop should be accurate too. You may have to do a bit more fussing around on a table saw. Set the miter gauge to 45 degrees with a drafting triangle. It's the cheapest accurate tool for the job. Make sure the triangle is against the body of the blade and isn't touching any of the teeth. Test the setup by cutting through a board at the 45 degree setting and flipping one of the boards over to form a corner. Hold both pieces against the drafting square. A gap in the joint means your setting is still a little bit off. Once you've got a true 45 degree angle, set the stop on the gauge as before so that you can return to the exact setting time and time again. If the indicator points to zero on a square cut and 45 on a 45 degree cut, 
you can trust it to be reliable at any other measurement too. However, because it's possible to be a fraction of a degree off the setting without knowing it, you always should cut a few test pieces to make sure you've got the exact angle you want.